All right, so let's go ahead and get into RDNA 3 multi-chip module GPUs launch schedule is revealed. Navi 31 for the 7900 series in Q4 of 2022. Navi 32 for the 7800 series in the first quarter or first half of 2023. AMD next gen multi-chip module RDNA 3 GPUs for the Radeon RX 7000 series graphics cards have been detailed once again by Moore's Law is Dead. While the information revealed is pretty much the same that we've heard over the past few months, what's new are the launch schedules which show that AMD will release its flagship variants as early as Q4 of 2022. Based on the latest information from MLID, both the Navi 31 and Navi 32 GPUs will utilize an MCM solution, but there's a possibility that the Navi 31 GPU could make use of 3D stacking while the Navi 32 GPU could make uh, use of a standard multi-die approach. Similar to AMD's Instinct MI 250X, it looks like Navi 31 might get a similar design as the Instinct MI 30 or 300 GPUs, which we're going to talk about here in just a second. We have more information from them, which are going to feature a 3D stacking technology that fuses the GPUs on top of the I/O die. We have heard the rumors of Infinity Cache being on a separate die, so that might be what's going on here. As for Navi 32, it will carry on the same design approach as the MI200 series. Both the Navi 31 and 32 GPUs will be composed of 6 nanometer I.O. and 5 nanometer GPU chiplets. Uh, that is the manufacturing process from TSMC. Remember, we talked about earlier this week that there is the potential for 4 nanometer. I think it's all but pretty much confirmed on the competitive Ada Lovelace launch that's coming out soon as well. So as for the launch schedule though, the AMD Navi 31 GPU will appear within the flagship 7900 series by the end of Q4 2022. Do note that the Navi 33 GPUs based on six nanometer monolithic designs will be the first to hit shelves. The Navi 32 GPUs for the Radeon 7800 series will launch in the first half of 2023. Also, the reason why I don't believe Navi 33 GPUs will end up with the RX 7600 series branding and instead use the 7700 series is simply the pricing. There are rumors that the Navi 33 graphics card will end up in the four to $500 US range, and they are meant to replace the existing Navi 21 parts. As such, it doesn't make much sense to brand high-end graphics cards as a 600 series product. There was also a recent rumor about AMD Navi 31 featuring a total of seven chiplets, one IOD, two GCD, and four MCDs. So there will be two GCDs sitting on top of the IOD while the MCD can either sit on top of the GCDs or the IOD. It will be one interesting GPU configuration to see the start of the chiplet era in gaming graphics consumer segment. That is by far the most exciting thing I think right now happening from a technical perspective on the PCB designs from Radeon is going to be this chiplet design that we saw really, really push the CPU market forward for AMD. And I'm, I'm super excited to see it hit the graphics card side. Now, from a mining perspective, will that help? In some algorithms, yes. Things like, I think, like Flux and, and Ton and maybe even Ravencoin, things that utilize the core, yes. Things that don't utilize the core, they're more memory intensive, Ergo, Ethereum, those types of coins. I don't see huge improvements coming from a multi-chip module design, but either way, it's still exciting nonetheless, uh, just if you're a nerd uh, over you know graphics cards in general. Uh, the AMD Navi 31 GPU, the flagship RDNA 3 chip, would power the next-gen enthusiast cards such as the Radeon RX 7900 XT graphics card. We have heard that the AMD that AMD will drop compute units in favor of work group processors on its next-gen RDNA 3 GPUs. We've talked about this design before. And basically, I mean, the rest of this we have already covered. Um, you can basically go back and watch it. Uh, on a different one, uh, we'll go over specs though, I suppose here really quick. Here's where the Navi th 33 sits. You have a 128 bit bus, a 192 and a 256 of GDDR6. This will be the faster GDDR6, presumably at 19 gigabits per second over the uh, 16 gigabits, 16 to 18 gigabits per second on 
the previous generation. So we should get even some better, of course, mining performance on memory intensive unit or algorithms for mining, but not a ton. So, um, yeah, there you go. It's not going to be like the GDDR6 X improvements to 24 gigabits per second that we are going to be seeing from Nvidia. But of course we do have more information on the MI 300 GPU. It's going to utilize quad multi-chip modules, CDNA3 GPUs, featuring 3D stacking with up to eight compute dies, HBM3, PCI Gen 5, and 600 watt TDP. Now this is a big boy, but of course this isn't your traditional desktop lineup. This is going to be your data center lineup to the for the most part. AMD Instinct MI300 GPUs will be powered by the next generation CDNA3 architecture have been detailed by Moore, Moore's Law is Dead. The new GPUs will be powering the upcoming data centers and are rumored to be the first to incorporate a 3D stacking design. Last year, Kepler L2 revealed that AMD Instinct MI300 was going to feature four graphics card or graphics compute dies. Later, this was confirmed in a patch where the chip appeared as the GFX 940 part. This was essentially going to double the MI250X, which features two GCDs, but the difference is that each GCD will feature two compute dies. So for the Instinct MI300, we are going to get up to eight GCDs on top on the top variant. In fact, the Instinct MI300 family will not be a singular GPU, but will comprise several different configurations. The top AMD Instinct MI300 GPU will feature a massive interposer that measures around 2750 uh, millimeters squared. The interposer has a very interesting configuration that packs four six nanometer tiles that contain the IO controllers, IP blocks, and measured around 320 to 360 millimeters squared. These tiles are based on six nanometer node and may also include some form of cache, though it's not confirmed yet. Now on top of these IO stacks, AMD will be using the brand new 3D stacking technology to incorporate two compute dies. These brand new AMD CDNA3 architecture based compute dies will be fabricated on a five nanometer node and feature a die size of around 110 millimeters squared per tile. Currently, there's no word about how many core or accelerator blocks each compute die will hold, but if we keep the same SP to core count as MI250X, we get up to 28,160 cores, but once again, this is just a mere speculation since a lot can change within CDNA3. Since the memory controllers are on board the bottom IO die, they are connected to two stacks of HBM3 using more than 12 metal layers. Each die is interconnected using a total of 20,000 connections, which is double what Apple is using on the M1 Ultra as a part of the Ultra Fusion chip design. As you can see here, we're up to the HBM3 from the HBM2E, and the maximum bandwidth is going to be 1,800 or 819 gigabytes per second, uh, which is absolutely incredible. HBM3 is going to be fast, boys. Now, while AMD is still relying on eight stacks, there are newer, they are newer HBM3 standard, which is the same as the one NVIDIA is using for its Hopper GPUs. Currently, MI250X uses eight HBM2E stacks, which are eight high and feature 16 gigabytes of memory per stack, 128 gigabytes per module. It may be likely that AMD raises the stacks to 12 HI, which is something that SK Hynix has already teased a while back. This would allow for up to 192 gigabytes of memory capacities on top on the top Instinct MI 300 GPU configuration marking a 50% increase. As for the TDP, each CDNA3 tile will have a TDP of around 150 watts. As for configurations, there is follows. The top config, four IO die, and then uh, four GCDs and eight compute dies. The bottom one, one IO die, one GCD, and two compute dies. So based on that, the top configuration will consume around 600 watts of power. The mid config will consume around 300 watts of power and the entry level around 150 watts. Currently, the top Instinct MI250X configuration consumes 560 watts of power and comes in the OAM form factor. 
The Instinct MI300 GPUs will be launching next year around the same time when Intel and NVIDIA will be out with their latest data center products such as Ponte Vecho, something like that, and Hopper. So, overall, new designs, craziness coming out. HBM3, obviously with, with Hopper, also going to be HBM3. That's going to be some fast memory. And way out of the price range of pretty much uh, what you would want to pay probably for whatever the mining performance will be, which will, I think, obviously be pretty crazy as far as what it looks like. The numbers will be incredible. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.